Fast Start Test Complete, Module 7, Creating Keyword Tests. So in Test Complete, there are two ways to create automated tests. The first is with what we call scripted tests, and this is where we write Python, JavaScript, JScript code, and script them in a language of your choice. In this module though, we're going to look at the second method, which is keyword tests, and this is a graphical drag and drop approach to creating tests and editing those tests. And there are two ways we can create those keyword tests. The first is to record those tests and the actions that we carry out. And the second is to build those tests using the test complete IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So we'll look at each of those in turn. The first one then is the method of recording those tests. And we can do that by clicking on the record keyword test. And when we click on that button, minimizes to the taskbar, leaves us with this recording bar. And the application under test is presented for us to start recording the actions. And in this example, we'll do a simple sum, five times five equals and we're presented with the answer 25. So test complete has recorded those actions, those click actions against the five multiply and equals buttons. And we have a result presented in our count plus results window. At this stage, we might want to validate that result. And in test complete terms, this is called a checkpoint. And on this recording bar, you'll notice we have a checkpoint button. And if we go for a checkpoint, called a property checkpoint, we'll get presented with a window and we need to carry out a couple of actions here. First is to identify the object we want to check, then the property of that object, and then specify the value that that should be set to. So we can define the object by pointing with the crosshair. The test complete wizard shows us the preview of the object we've selected tells us the name of the object. On the next page of this wizard, we'll get the default property value that we want to check. And actually, test completes pick the right property. So we want to look at the W text property, which currently has a value of 25 decimal space. And we have to be very careful that we do identify the right value here. There is, in fact, a space and a decimal point after the 25. And if we want to validate it, we need to validate that whole string. So we've selected the property and on the next screen, test complete just confirms that the value we want to check against. And if we click on the finish button, the recording of that checkpoint will have completed as well. And we can close the application under test, stop the recording and test complete will show us the new keyword test and all of the steps that we carried out. And if we look at the test items and the test steps that Test Complete has recorded here, we can walk through this. The steps it recorded were to run the tested app, Count Plus, then click on the five button, then click on the multiply button, click on the five button again, and press the equals button. Then we completed our checkpoint, which was to make sure that the value was 25 and then we closed the window. So there we've recorded test two. So at this point then we can run and replay the recorded test. Click on the run test button. Test complete will go through the steps, starting off with the run tested app. Test step. So the count plus application is opened. The buttons are pressed in sequence and then the checkpoint is carried out to make sure that the expected results are correct at which point test complete shows the log file, which takes us line by line through all of the steps that were carried out. Start the application, click on the five button, click on the multiply button, click on the five button, click on the equals button, and then complete the checkpoint where we confirm that the actual value of 25 dot space matches the expected value of 25 dot space. It was a comparison where it's expected to equal each other and the result was a pass. 
and then finally calc plus window is closed so that's the recording of a keyword test the second way then we can build out our keyword tests is to use the drag and drop options in the test complete IDE so if we add a second test in this example or a third test in this instance which we'll call test 3 and you'll see that in the workspace for the test we have an operations panel on the left hand side and there are various collections of different operations so checkpoints logging operations miscellaneous operations for comments and delays and the most commonly used one is the test actions so from here we can drag on these test actions like run tested app drag that across to the test steps pane click on calc plus select the final list set of options there just click finish and our first step is to run the tested app from there we can complete things like on-screen actions and an on-screen action will be an action carried out against a particular object so we go through the steps of selecting the object then we select the method we want to carry out on that object so in this instance it's a button we'll go for the click button method and if it was an object like a text box where we were expected to put text into the object then we'd enter some specific values but in this case it's just a click button and when we click next we're presented with the operation parameters but as I say that doesn't apply to a button and if we click finish we'll see that on-screen test action listed in our test steps window so calc plus win side calc object the equals button operation was click button and we can continue to build that out with more on-screen actions if we like and also add a checkpoint so if I wanted to add the checkpoint at this stage I could drag on a property checkpoint and again we're taken through a wizard so we can drag the crosshair to the object that we want to look at we can specify the property of that object we want to check w text again click next and then set the value that we want to do the comparison of actual and expected results for click on finish and test complete adds the property checkpoint as the last step in this test case so the important thing to remember whether you're building this out with the drag and drop or the record operation is that there are three key aspects to this the object that we're going to interact with and its name the operation or the method we're going to carry out on that object and then the value that we might set that object to or a particular property to so for example if it was a text box we'd have the text box name here we'd have the set text operation here and then we'd have a value of that text that we wanted to set in the value column It's worth remembering the hierarchy of how all of this hangs together at this stage as well if we work up from the bottom we have a number of test steps and those test steps one or many test steps belong to a test case that test case or many test cases can belong to a project and a project can be contained within a project suite which will contain one or more projects for execution so the hierarchy going back down then project suite project has a number of test cases and a test case will have a number of test steps you'll notice also on the test workspace area that we have three tabs down the bottom the test steps tab which we've already been looking at a variables tab and a parameters tab and both of these tabs allow us to manipulate or feed in values that might change either at the start of the test or during the test execution 
And that really is the distinction between these two. Parameters are values you set that are fed into the test just as it starts to run, and they don't change at runtime. Variables are values that you may change at any point during the test run, so you might increment a particular value. We can add parameters and variables by right clicking in this pane and doing add parameter. And we can give it a parameter name. Call this calc num1. And you set the type, whether it's an integer, boolean, or, or string, for example, and maybe even a default value. And those parameters then can be used at the test steps. So if we were to have a test action of an on-screen action, for example, and that action was to be carried out against the WinSci calc window, which could have a keys method, which simulates one or more key presses. And that keys method expects a value, and that value in this instance we could set to that parameter. So instead of putting a constant value in there of some keys to press, we could use a test parameter, and we can pick the test parameter that we've just selected there. So in this case, if we move that up, and we just disable these other test steps here quickly, disable those operations so that we only run the start calc plus and the keys operation. What we should see when we run the test itself, that the tested app will run, that's the first test step, and then the keys method will be run against WinSci calc, and it will use a value, or the keys that we'll press, is the value that are set as part of those parameters, 111. So if we run that test, it checks that we want to use that those default values. If we click yes, calc plus starts up, and you'll see that we've got the keyboard input there. And that keyboard input was the input of that 111 string. Where you'll really find this concept of parameters useful is when you start to use or reuse tests in the project area. So when we drag on test three, you'll see here that we can specify the parameters and we could change those values and we can repeat that test and we can repeat it with different values each time round. So the key to remember with parameters is that these are values that are fed in to the test at the point at which the test starts to execute. So the other aspect then was variables. We've talked about parameters and those parameters are fed in just as we start the test. They don't change during the test. But we also have the concept of variables, which is a value which is set during the execution and can be modified during execution. And again, we can add a variable in by right clicking and selecting new item. We give it a name, var1, a type, and again, a default value, which might be 1111. Where variables differ from parameters is that you can set those variables at runtime. And if you look in the statements section of the operations panel, you'll find a set variable value. And if you drag that on, we'll get the wizard. You select the variable, file one that we just defined. You can set the value in there, so maybe 2222. And that variable has now changed or will change at runtime to 2222. And if we were to do a similar sort of thing where we use the keys operation, I'll just copy that, paste that in. Drag that down there. So we've set the variable to 222 there. And instead of using the 
parameter we just fed in at the start we're going to use a variable here and we can use the ellipse here and instead of a test parameter we can change a variable and in this instance we can go for the test 3 var 1 so now we set the variable carry out the keys at operation against the winside calc application and we use variable var1 which is set to 222 again unlike parameters we can continue to change that variable at runtime so we could drag on change it again var1 constant change the value this time around to 333 and again carry out this keys operation paste that after there and this time it would be the variable value 333 that is entered using the keys method against the win side count object. So in short, parameters use those to create permutations of your test when the parameters are fed in at runtime for each instance of the same test. Variables we can set during the test execution and modify them during the test execution which is useful if we're iterating through loops during test execution and need to change the value each time we go through a loop we'll look at variables and parameters and how we use those in tests and projects as we build those up in a later module but for now as long as you grasp those key concepts and become familiar with the concepts of adding variables and parameters to your tests, you'll be in a good place to start building those tests as we look at some more advanced topics in later modules.